Welcome everyone. Time is now 6.30 and we will call the meeting to order. First start off the pledge. Elderly, we're not going to receive that money from the state. We're not going to get that next year. 
cover all the utilities, expenses, and just random. That's not really how it works.
vice principal of PCS with five in the budget. I, I don't know. Because we don't see it. That's why. I, I can tell you my business, my place that's, of business. But that's what, I, what I'm trying to say is that's what I'm trying to ask for. What they present their budget. Right. But you want to see items. And then you want to see the line items that are suspending the law. I have to, every month. We just did it today. That's why it came to my mind today. We just went for our financial meeting at work. I, have, I get all my backup from my department. It shows everything that I spent. And I have to justify myself to my boss in that financial meeting if I'm over budget. Or even if you're not over budget. Because he might ask, well, why did you spend money on that? Or why did you spend money on that? We should be, we should be allowed to see, by line item, by school, what they spend. You know, the same should go for the town. We should be able to see that. So we know what it's really going to. Because you can put, you can, you can say, so the fact that you're thing, you can budget for ten thousand dollars worth of widgets. You can go and buy four thousand dollars custom furniture and slide it into the widget, into the widget fund, because we would never know. Right. No, I'm not saying you, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying there's, I'm telling you, there's, there's people who do it. So I think the board of finance we should ask that from the school board going forward. Start for FY19. $35 million. I work for a $100 million company. I have to justify my $20 million budget for my boss. It's the same here. It only makes sense. Yeah, no, that's a good point, Scott. And uh, I can actually look at that. Sorry, I've inquired about that information. I can tell you that I went to the Board of Ed meeting uh, last week, and uh, one thing that, again, I, I could definitely validate your point that if you don't go to these meetings, but um, when going down the list of what are some of the things that we restored now that the funding has come through uh, for Board of Ed, there was one item that they did not approve that was on their original spending, which was a membership. Just an example of, it was like 13000 uh, for an annual membership uh, in this organization, which has its perks and benefits, but the point being is that, you know, when times are tough, which we still are, and are still going to be in the future, uh, those type of sacrifices will have to be made. So in good faith, you know, that was great to see acknowledged, but I agree with you that this is going to be more. But at the same time, right. you and I sat a board of ed meeting before we uh, approved the budget. Right. And he sat there and he said, oh, well, the first million really should go back to the time. Yes. And then the other the meeting that we had to approve the budget, he, as soon as I asked him the question about, well, did you put money into the pension or something, he pulled that back so fast that he made it statement in the board maybe talking about how some of this money really belongs to the town. And then as soon as we go to talk about the budget, he pulls, he pulls it 180 and talks totally different than what he did for the board of ed meeting. It's not right. Yeah. Uh, any other uh, questions or comments? No? Okay. Moving on to our next item. Item C, discuss and accept post-insurance tax compliance procedures for tax-exempt obligations as recommended by the Bond Council. Uh, you all have that, that Kelly distributed. Well, I do it, but well, it's 
it's not like written. Yeah, it's not like a written procedure. Like now I have it in writing. Yeah. And this is what we need to follow. And then you report it where? On a website? Yeah, at MLM. MMA. And you haven't done that before? Yeah, we do it oh, every year. We still we do it. We do it every year, but this is the written, like, he helped me, he wrote up the written procedures gotcha. that we have to follow. So if the IRS ever came in and said, hey, what non tax exempt bonds do you have? I could be like, here, this is our procedures. Then what I would do every year is a check off on the back page. I would check off, sign it, and then I have like knowledge that I did it. That's what it is. And also you go on the website, it's a federal website, you can see that it's all disclosed. Yeah, we have to do that. It's part of my audit. Any 
uh, questions or comments? Could be a format so you can just run run across the printer and make it available. Right. And we wouldn't make, you know, like I think back in the day they used to make for us like hundreds of copies of it. A lot of people want copies. We wouldn't, you know, uh, just spend all that money and get hundred stacks and just stay there, you know, sit there and nobody wants to pick up. Yeah. We just put it off. Yeah. We just need to make sure like our web page can hold that information. Right. That's why I said there's still, you know, these, these are these are some ideas that I wanted yeah. to, you know, just discuss briefly, but um, yeah, it doesn't mean that they're gonna happen like that. Obviously, there's still some research that has to be done for making some of these available. All right. And uh, before we get into E, I wanted to bounce back up to the top to item A to discuss and accept the tax suspense list 2017 2018. We have that document in front of us here. Sorry. Yep, no, our tax collector is here, so thank you. Um, if there's anything I'd like to make note of. Basically, um, these are all people that either are deceased, bankruptcy, can't get hold of, and that's how. So what I do with this list is I still like it. It just takes off our record. But I it's still apply to what we absolutely apply to. How old were the items on this list? They go back to 2015, so they would have been left open. 2015 is the most so if you get from um, 2011 is you'll see one person um, real estate and that is like in a tax sale and we took a bit lower. Lot 
54 is adjacent to the plow company now that bought the old Connecticut mop building. And what they're looking to do, they want to purchase that lot because in the near future, they're going to need to put another building on that lot. Uh, maybe this year, maybe next year, they, they don't really know, but they really would lock in, like to lock in and get it purchased. Um, we had, it's been going on for a little while now. The first offer they gave to us was $50,000. We had it appraised. The appraisal came in at $80,000. So when we had our meeting and met, um, that's when Lou was still here, he thought that 50000 was too low, so we made an offer of 65, and he said that even if they came in at 60 or even 55, he would sell it only because of the lot and you can't, they can't utilize the whole lot. Is there a minimum price we can accept? No, I don't believe so because the town owns that property. June Gagney, uh, I was wondering what happened to the bulky waste. Did, did that ever get? We are still negotiating. Okay. Um, with All right. The bulky waste to okay. try and get. Um, they've given me two different offers, and I'm trying to work with them to see if I can get a little more. Okay. Um, so we don't know up. yet for July. No. no. Okay. I right. I'm hoping for an answer by the end of the month because then the new. Yeah, we can. We have to use up two passes as it is. Okay, thanks. 
Okay, any other questions? Comments? <laughs> no, I just have a question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or maybe it's for Kathy. Does the back fall open? Yes. Right. Yeah, we just actually had two bids go out. First, we bid like
Which section? Inside of 9-5. 9-5? Any other questions, comments? No, I got okay, seeing none. Oh, Jack Bowden, who's yep. the point? Kathy, the, that solar project is over a 20 year period, right? Yes. What happens to these solar panels after the 20 years is done? So, at the last meeting, that question was asked, and at the, at the end of the 20 years, we can either purchase that and own it, own it, we can update it if new comes out, or I believe, this is the only thing, I believe that Paul had said um, they would take it back if we wanted a walk that they would do. Yes, but the problem with this is we, meaning us in this room, right, are looking at something that's going to happen 20 years from now. Where are we going to be? We're going to have our children and grandchildren doing this. And they're going to be stuck with it. If the roofs are bad, then. But there's contracts for that, Jack. And it doesn't matter if you're alive for that contract or your grandchild is alive. It's a contract. So that contract, will, it will be solid. And yes, you're right, the younger generation, it's, but think about it, the younger generation is going to replace every one of us. Right. So. Anyway, but I mean, we're just leaving this problem for them, is what I'm saying. Or opportunity. It may not be a problem, it may It may be, may not be. Yeah. But we're doing something for our children in the future that we don't know what the problem is going to be, I'm saying. You know, I'm just bringing it up, not to... You know, I know everybody here now. But I think you look at that, look at Eversource. If you stick with Eversource, look at the problem. Yes, they're doing updating and they're looking into doing all the wind out in Long Island Sound and stuff, but that's the future, Jack. That's how it works. <laughs> we can't live in a bubble. Well, I was just saying, you know, did we look at this? All the people that's involved, in it, you know what I mean? Yes. To, to say, well, Let's look at the bad points, maybe, too. That's oh, we are. Well, yeah, I mean, you make it sound good when they hesitate here, yeah? but them guys ain't going to be here in 20 years from now to say, well, we can just update this for Plainfield, you know? But that's why we have a contract. So you're going to have to sign a contract. Yes, but we are not at that stage yet, Jack. Okay, right. No, I'll just ask. You right. No, just, just like we're not at the stage right now, really, for discussing this uh, a lot for the Board of Finance, because at this time we don't have the information that says, you know, that we're going to have some financial application for the Board of Finance to discuss and make a decision. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe, maybe within the Why would the Board of Finance want to discuss it? And there will be. They're going to spend no money. There will be a hearing yeah. also. So right, there's the going to be a hearing. Right, right, right. Yeah. But I just wanted to note that because that's why, you know, obviously that's been on the agenda and that's been a hot topic uh, in the past couple of weeks, but that's why it's not on the Board of Finance uh, agenda at this time because it does not need to be. It, it, it will be eventually, though, right, because right, right, you'll be making not, some not money on this. Right. So, yeah. No, we don't make money over there. Well, you're saving money. We're saving, saving money, what? but we are not making money. About 215000 a year. We are not making money. We right. Save you're saving money. Saving so but there's no revenue coming. But it will have there will have to be an adjustment in the budget somehow for it. Whether it's in so. the electricity. Right. We are, we are hope so. <laughs> so all right. Um, at this time I would entertain a motion to adjourn. All right, I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Very good. We are adjourned.